you had your chance and then you blew it. That is the most absurd statement of the year. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Oh, baby. I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Live from Rock Solid Studios in Granite Falls, it's time for Minnesota Sports, live with DJ Matty C and Paul the Shield Vold. And this is Minnesota Sports Live. We are back and live here at the Granite Falls Studios here. And uh, without further ado, I'm your host, DJ Matty C, a.k.a. Matt Callahan, a.k.a. Matty C, a.k.a. Callie, ah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we welcome you and also from Woods and Shores Studios in Aiken, Minnesota, Paul Vold, the Shield. What's going on, Shield? I am so excited for multiple reasons here for this show tonight. I'm doing fantastic. If you can't tell already, we've been talking about a big reveal right to start off the show. If you haven't figured it out by now, you need to get your eyes checked because check out what we've got going on right behind me. That's right. Minnezona Sports Live. Yes. Wonderful. For the Woods and Shores Studios. I am so excited. I'm sure you guys all love it as well. Let us know in the comments what you think. Yeah. And uh, I'm ready for another great show tonight. Yeah. And, you know, we have another update as well. Um, hashtag DroneGate2020. The Kerf Doctor go. is back. Finally, it took a while. But, uh... Well, it was it was complicated. I was into a dark room. I had a, had a thing over my head, a bag, and, and they had to drag me and a lot of questions. But then, after a few days, I just got let out. Then they said, they're like, okay, it wasn't you. So You're right, exactly. Like, ah, no, no, wrong tag. Our bad. Okay, well, that's good news. Here's a voucher. Here's a voucher for some food. Yeah. yeah. We'll validate your parking. That's right. <laughs> so it's good to have the Kerf Doctor hey, back. Glad to be back. And the zoners are happy that he's back as well. And, you know, Voldy, we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. We do. And um, the zoners have been waiting. You know, I've been waiting, you've been waiting, Kerf Doctor's been in waiting. It's time for some tater tot. <laughs> ha, man, who hot tay. Fresh out of the oven, it's tater tot hot take. All right, Voldy, we have it fresh out of the oven and here's the thing we're, we're talking vikings but we're gonna go from one thing to another okay so we're gonna go quick on it but first thing i want to talk about and the zoners i think need to chime in as well because there's been a lot of buzz lately voldy and it's been around our third round pick 2020 third round pick cameron dantzler okay uh on the socials medias, the Vikings socials medias, Cam Dantzler had a play on one, our favorite, Zona favorite, Adam Thielen, okay? He had a nice yeah. nice play on Adam Thielen, breaking up a pass, and uh, Adam Thielen, after that practice, you know what he said? Or Zimmer said what he said. Adam Thielen came up to me during practice today and said, 27 is going to be really good. Ooh. So we're not really missing the Xavier. I don't think anyone at this point would. I'm certainly not. Uh, no. Voldy, your thoughts on the Cameron Dantzler hype? I'm right on it. I'm all aboard the Cam Dantzler train right now. We're hitching our wagon right to it, and we're going to ride off into the sunset, baby right to the start of the season, and I'm loving it. Cam Dantzler's got to come into this camp knowing that he's got to be the guy. 
is drafted a high spot for the Vikings. He's going to have to produce. And so far, of course, in the early goings of training camp, it's looking pretty good. Less than a month now until the first game of the season. You know, there's not going to be a whole lot that, uh, you know, that really signifies as a benchmark for what he's going to bring into the season because that's what you'd find out in these little things called preseason games. But right. the fact there's none of those really plays into a factor. But if Adam Thielen says that he's going to be good, then I think uh, I think we're in for a real treat for the rookie this year. Right. And, you know, it's, it's all a part of the Zimmer plan. And what I mean by that is we can't forget that Jeff Gladney, first round pick and he's a guy to look at too Mike Hughes he's been playing a lot in the slot no pun intended but it's true and I think we got to realize Voldy is that corners nowadays have success when they are younger much younger not saying that you know Richard Sherman's I mean has he lost a step sure I mean, I wouldn't say no to it because, honestly, he's a guy that, you know, just knows how to play cornerback. He, he, he is a guy right. that has grown up and learned how to play, play it well. Now, with these younger guys, I mean, they're more athletic, they're lengthier, they can make plays on the ball. Now, for one, Cam Dantzler, I mean, he's 6'2", okay? He's 6'2", he's got really long arms, and that's what we need. And it's almost, it's a little Xavier-esque, but at the same time, it's, I feel like he's lighter. They called him Needle <laughs> in high school, okay? <laughs> and, you know, it's true, but he has made some really good plays. He picked off Kirk Cousins, okay? So... We can't look into this and say, oh, wow, he's going to be a star, blah, 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 after these couple of practices. Now, right. not saying that it shouldn't be not appreciated by Vikings fans, but we have to remember, you know, it's different when you're playing a different team, different, you know, players, things like that. So we got to see what happens. But he's making a strong case for uh, a starting job so Voldy when we get to week one is Cam Dantzler going to be the starter yeah he's going to be he's going to have to be I think that's just the way that's going into the start of the year other guys of course you got Mike Hughes you got other guys like Holton Hill still on the roster I don't know if Hill's going to be the the, the complimentary piece yeah. with Mike Hughes right off the bat, or if he's going to be, you know, the nickel guy, or if it's going to be Cam Dancer coming into that situation. But looking at the makeup of the, the defensive backfield right now for the Vikings, yes, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of growing pains, but there's one coach, especially a uh -huh. defensive coach that coach cornerbacks exclusively coming into the league might as well be Mike Zimmer. Right. And you know, Adam Zimmer, co-defensive coordinator and Pat George Patterson. I mean, it's such a good makeup for success with this team right, right now. And I think Dantzler definitely is in play. And the thing is, is I think they're going to do this by committee. And you mentioned Holton oh, yeah. Hill. Holton Hill has had a really good training camp. He broke up a couple passes this past practice and this guy, I mean, if he stays out of trouble, which I really hope so, because he's got a lot of promise. Zim loves him. So let's keep it going, right? So, I mean, exactly. we, we've talked about this, and I think Chris mentioned here in the comments too, it's the toughest position to play on defense. And that's the thing. And it's, it, it's such a tough position, but it comes down to communication. And that's what happened right. with Xavier, is that he either didn't understand or whatever. He, and he got frustrated, and things got worse for Xavier. So this position of cornerback, Dantzler, he's showing, showing off, showing out, and he's going to be a good player. I really think so. And honestly, 
I don't know why he dropped so far because he had a slow 40 time. <laughs> so you're going to say, oh, slow 40 time. Oh, no, we can't get him first, second round. No way. It's not like he's going to look at that and say, huh, I really want to improve on that. And his pro day, much better. So, again, Zim, Spielman, get a steal. So, we'll see. let's see what happens, though. I'm liking what Zimmer's doing with the defense, the D-backs, and everything. I mean, it's not like they're going to go out there and say, well, good luck, guys, <laughs> you know. But exactly. are they going to look for a veteran presence? I mean, we talked about this, Voldy. I mean, I think it's a possibility. Do you think it's a possibility? You know, I think it is. It's always a possibility. You, you just can't say no because of the fact that, you know, maybe some of these guys may or may not end up on the practice squad just because of the fact that there's so much more extra room now. You know, the practice squad is up to 16 players compared to 10. You, you can't say no, especially with a lot yeah. of guys that are maybe looking for somewhere to play this year. You throw in the fact that, you know, guys are going to have to come in, you know, as green as they are yeah. with no preseason very restrictive camps. I mean, this was the first week of padded practice, and we're already talking about how the start of the year is going to be. I mean, it's still an uphill battle. It's still a long ways away, but yep. next thing you know, it'll be week one, U.S. Bank Stadium, and you're playing Green Bay at yeah. noon. So it's it's it, it's a long journey, but at the same start, it's just right around the corner. Exactly. And one thing uh, Chris mentioned here, too, is he was taking on Jamar Chase at LSU, and he was yep. one of the only cornerbacks to shut him down. Now, I'm going to add one more thing to that. Dantzler played Alabama, LSU yep. last season, yep. only allowed 21 passing yards in those two yep. games combined. So this guy is the real deal, and I'm really feeling confident he'll be that guy for us, and there's going to be – some growing pains, okay? We all have to remember, he's a rookie. <laughs> Gladney, he is a rookie. same deal. He's a rookie, yep. You know, so we'll see what happens. So, anyway. Let's just hope we don't have Chris Cook 2.0. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Knock on wood. I'm knocking on wood. As I say. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should throw him on the uh, infamous list. That's another one. We, we could just do the entire Minnesota infamous list. <laughs> yeah, you there. know, that's not, that's not segment, a bad idea. Boom, right there. Yeah. Good idea, Voldy. Well, think about it. All right. Uh, next one. We're staying with the, the Vikings here. Um, yep. We're talking about Delvin Cook. Surprise, surprise. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing is that, you know, first what came out is he's getting a lighter workload, the chef, right. or the chef's work, workload limited. And, you know, because they're trying to work out a deal from yesterday, okay, we're going to get to the current situation now. But, you know, people thought he was going to hold out. And Delvin Cook is not that type of guy, which we appreciate. And here's the update on it. Voldy, I know we talked about the, this, uh, this, excuse me. Um, but Delvin might possibly play out the final year of his contract. I don't think he's going to come in to this thinking, well, are they going to give me a deal? I think this is what they're doing right now, moving us up to today. Right. Delvin Cook, Vikings, you know, they kind of put off, break off the contract extension talks. Uh, Voldy, is it panic or patience with <laughs> Delvin Cook here? I would like to say it's patience, but yeah. it's internal panic at the same time. You know, you put the quotations at the bottom in parentheses, yeah. internal, internally panicking, sure. just with a straight face the entire time. I think it really comes down to the fact, you know, right now, the fact that he isn't sitting out training camp, I think is a good sign. But there's also the other side of the coin, too. It's just like, well, yeah, he's going to be in training camp. He's got to be ready for the season right? because there's no preseason. So Thank he's basically got to go into it looking like that he may sit out the first week or two. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out. I think it's uh, all a message of good faith right now yeah. for, for Dalvin Cook just to say that, uh, 
you know, things are going to work out. I'd like to see a deal happen very, very soon. But, of course, the latest reports saying that, you know, contract negotiations have uh, kind of come to an end. And that's not a good sign for the start of the year. But who knows? Maybe the next day, maybe the next week, something will happen. But I think right now, I think it's uh, a game of patience right now. I think everything's going to hopefully work out. Right. And I think we both were thinking, you know, at the latest week two or something like that. But, you know, it's it's almost at a point that we have to look at it and say, hey, you know, he wants his money. He deserves it. Absolutely. Right. But at the same time, it's got to work out for Dalvin and it's got to work out for the Vikings. So they can't go into this thinking, well, we don't have to worry about it too much. And, you know, we got to factor in injuries. I mean, even Chris is saying right here, Delvin Cook has multiple hamstring strains going back to days at Florida State, ACL tear, hard to give long-term money to a running back with his injury history. He's a franchise tag waiting to happen. See money with the dimes here to start off the show. Love it, see money. Exactly. So we're rolling. We're rolling on it. But, again, like he's saying, injuries, too. we got to watch out for that. But I feel like it's starting to turn a corner. Now, you can't – the thing is, is you can't be too sure. And we've seen it, you know. But he's a running back, too. I mean, this is this is almost – I mean, this isn't Adrian Peterson, work through it, strong enough type of thing. Right. I mean, plays are faster, stronger, everything. But the way he played last year, we got to factor that in, too. Okay? And I think the Vikings will find a way. They always do. I mean, that's the thing. He wants to be here, so let's keep him, right? It's – it's kind of one of those things where it's like it's a wait and see game. So we just got to keep waiting and seeing. So hopefully Delvin yeah. gets his money. Hopefully it's soon. Hopefully we don't have to worry about it as much. So uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, the Minnesota Twins. Kenta, my A, duh. Okay. That guy almost had a no hitter last night. Voldy, you got your twin shirt on. You got your twins hat on. What are your thoughts from last night? You know, last night was exciting to watch. You know, you you finally got to see what the Twins have been working yeah. hard for when it comes to getting the type of pitching that they need. And, you know, it's too bad that the no-hitter couldn't have been completed. And the fact that the Twins almost lost the game is about as Minnesota as it would get. But luckily enough, they held on for the win. But seeing that from that trade uh, for uh, Gratterall, in that yeah. trade for Kent Maeda and a couple other pieces. So far, it's in the favor of the, you know, I'd say right now it's more in the favor of the Twins because last two starts that, uh, you know, Maeda has made, I mean, he's pretty much shut down the Brewers. I mean, he pitched against them, against them last week, pitched against them last night, and, well, yeah, pretty solid efforts. And, or, I mean, set a new uh, team record with, you know, eight consecutive strikeouts. I mean, it's fantastic to see finally for once pitching finally able to come through for the twins. Yeah. And for that, I mean, starting pitching as well. And that's exactly. kind of the nice thing about it is that they finally have guys that they can rely on. Dobnik, uh, Brios, he's got to get a little better. But we've got a lot of other pitchers that are getting back from injury, suspension, things like that. That And that's what we want from the Twins. And Kenta Maeda, again, I was not huge on him coming to Minnesota at first, but I'm, I'm happy to be wrong on this. So Kenta Maeda, I, I liked what he was throwing. And the thing is, is I feel like when that hit happened, it just kind of like, Sucked every all the fun out of it because it was like pretty much, oh, yeah, so close, so close. But again, twins get the win, almost ended in disaster. Um, you know, Taylor Rogers, uh, man, but 
you know, it's just one game. I mean, think about this. Uh, 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 Mariano Rivera, right? Yeah. For the Yankees. Yeah, that was yeah. true. Uh, he's had a lot of blown saves, too. I mean, we got to think yeah. about that, too. You know, so, but with Maeda and the Twins win, winning last night, gives the Twins hope. So, you know, I was oh, so close. So close, Voldy, to getting that no-hitter. But, again, you know what the weird thing is? Is ESPN sent out a notification from, like, the fifth inning. And I'm like, yep. okay, well, I feel like there's a lot of innings to go. So, you know, let's pump the brakes. So I don't know if it jinxed it, things like that. But people believe in that, actually. I mean, I didn't watch the game at all yeah. until the top of the ninth inning that I saw he was taking the ninth. And literally, as soon as I turned it on, Dick Brammer, Burt Blylevin, Jinx the holy hell out of it. Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't allowed a hit tonight. He's got a no-hitter going. Last twins no-hitter, 2011. It's like, shut up, Dick. <laughs> shut up, Bert. Uh, You're jinxing it. Unwritten so, rules of baseball. You don't talk about a no-hitter. You just yeah. let it play out. I know. And that's yeah. the issue. Kerf Doctor giving claps. I agree. The thing is, is we wait till like, I feel like seventh inning ish, maybe in a way, but I just feel like you keep talking about it. You keep talking about it. If it right. It's just not going to happen, right? So I don't know. But still, it's really good for the Twins. Let's keep it rolling. The twins are doing just fine. Hopefully, uh, we'll see more from. And another thing, yeah. too. Jose Brios has been trash this year. Yeah. Start off trash. Taylor Rogers, as of late, double trash. Yeah. Just a couple of dumpster fires as of late. I don't know what it is about Barrios for this year that's just not clicking right now. Maybe it's the arm isn't fully loosened yet. It's going to take another couple of starts before yeah. he finally starts getting it together. But, I mean, not a whole lot of games left for you know him to make a serious impression. So yeah. you got to figure it something out. Taylor Rogers, I think you just got to skip over him a couple of times. Let yeah. him, you know, Romo? get some rest. Let Tyler Clippard get in there. Clippard. Yeah. Let, you know, let Trevor May get some reps down there yeah. at the back half, back end of the game. So, I mean, you got to figure something out. You got to mix it up a little bit. Exactly. So, hey, you know, maybe they will look in and to dealing someone. I don't know. I mean, come on. Right. Fingers crossed. We'll see what, what happens. But anyway, Voldy, uh, we got to move on to Infinity Rankings. And today... We're going the fantasy football route because, honestly, it's coming up. And hopefully we get a full season. And I have my infinity rankings for top fantasy football quarterbacks. So, Kerf Doctor, roll it. While many have power rankings, none have captured them all. It's time for Matty C's Infinity Rankings. I just want to let people know that no one has gotten the Infinity Rankings like we do here on Minnesota Sports Live. So, without further ado, Voldy, here are my top six. Bam! All right, so let's okay. take a look. Number six. We're going to start with number six. Voldy, Dak Prescott. Now, All right. I know what people are thinking. Matty C., what the hell are you thinking? I mean, Court Hansen is probably thinking, well, why didn't you put it at number one? You know, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. The reason why Dak Prescott is at number six, and it's a good spot to be. I mean, don't discredit the fact – for PPR leagues last year, Voldy, you know how many points Dak had? How many? 323 points. Okay? Mm. That is second for quarterbacks. Wow. Think about that. And Crazy. not only do they have Mari Cooper, Michael Gallup, um, a guy by the name of, I believe, uh, uh, C.D. Lamb. <laughs> I mean, they are hoping, all three of them, 
three 1,000-yard wide receivers. Now, that's a little much, but a little bit. Dak is playing for a contract, okay? And I think Dak's going to be a little fired up about this. So, hey, you know, Dak is going to be a good uh, quarterback to pick up. You know, I'm thinking if, if you're going to, if, if it's a reach, I'd probably say third, fourth at some point. But I digress. Six for Dak Prescott. Number five, Voldy, Kyler Murray. Okay. Now, he was a rookie last year. Had to deal right. with some growing pains, things like that. Kirk isn't ahead of Dak and Kyler. Come on, Matty C. Be a little homer. <laughs> no, yeah, Jimbo, I just I can't on this one. You know, because... Numerically speaking, not there. Yeah. But I'm just saying, from a fantasy football perspective, I think Kirk... Honestly, I think Kirk is a better passer, things like that. Dak has more mobility. But, again, I think Kirk is a better uh, quarterback, in my opinion. But, hey... We're talking fantasy, not overall ranks. So, number five, Kyler Murray. Murray is a – he's quick. He's got a little Russell Wilson-esque in him. He can run. He can pass, things like that. I think Kyler Murray is going to be a top five uh, at the end of fantasy this year. He had 269 points, and this is PPR, okay, Baker Mayfield would be my number number six. Easiest schedule in the league. Upgraded at both offensive tackle positions. Has two quality tight ends. Hop, uh, Hooper, and Joku. And do I need to rant about their wide receiver death? Yeah, but if he's going to rant about their wide receiving core, he's got to do it in person. He's got to do it here on the show. (laughs) Calling you out, c And Stefanski, OC. So... That, that's another thing. You know, I think Baker's liking what he's seeing. So, hey, if that if Stefanski can fix it, sure. Let's see what happens. But let's hope so. We'll see. Number four. It'll get much worse. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Number four, Deshaun Watson. I mean, what's there to say about Deshaun Watson? Now, I know what you're thinking. DeAndre Hopkins is gone. Okay. But Brandon Cooks. Randall Cobb, they signed as well. Kiki QT as well. He's on that team. I mean, he has enough weapons, but I think Brandon Cooks is going to be kind of their number one now. And he, again, he played for the Patriots, played for the Rams. He did really well. So we can't discredit that fact. And Deshaun, he was right behind um, Dak. He had 309 points at QB. So if you want to get Deshaun Watson, I'm thinking mm, second, maybe third. You know, we'll see what happens. you got to get your depth first. All right, Kirk is a better passer than 90%, and starting QB is undoubtedly a top 10 QB. Kirk is one of the most accurate starters, one of the top deep ball passers. Yep. And one of the best at play actions. The number is proven. Exactly. Andrew, you're right. 100%. And that's the thing, is that Kirk is, I feel like, better than Deck at this point. We can't discredit the fact that he is a good, accurate quarterback. People make him out to be, oh, he overthrows people. That No. Mitchell Trubisky overthrows people, (laughs) okay? I mean, Josh Allen overthrows people, okay? And then, Chris, again, Deshaun and Russell constantly doing more with less, keeping their coaches from getting fired. (laughs) Exactly. Absolutely. So, Deshaun Watson, I think he's going to be good. David Johnson, good pass-catching running back. So, get your more points, people. Okay, number three, Russell Wilson. Again, I am... A huge Russell Wilson fan. The thing is, DK Metcalf is starting to be a number one in Seattle. Okay, we can't forget that. Josh Allen, LOL. Exactly. You know, Josh Allen. You know, and Diggs. You know, would you rather be with Josh Allen or Kirk Cousins, who again threw him a lot of touchdown passes? So eh, we'll see. But Russell Wilson. I mean. 
the guy can run. The guy is a very accurate passer. Great deep ball thrower as well. 58% oof. I feel <laughs> almost feel bad for Dix. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Not. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I love Diggs, but at the same time, you know what? You get, if you want to be traded, this is what the Vikings will do. You're off to Buffalo. So, with Russell, DK Metcalf is a guy that I got to, you know, definitely, we got to definitely look at as a top wide receiver. Doug Baldwin's gone, but Tyler Lockett. I mean, Russ has been fantastic. And, you know, and again, he had 315 points in fantasy football. So if you want a top-tier quarterback for your fantasy football team, you're looking for us this way. Okay, so. Easily. Number two and number one. This is so tough because, honestly, Lamar was unbelievable last year. Yep. Patrick Mahomes was good, too. He did get hurt, but. He won a Super Bowl. So, I mean, we got to think about it like this. Now, the reason why Lamar Jackson is number two. I love Lamar Jackson. I've been high on him ever since he was drafted. People call him a running back. Not from what I saw last year. (laughs) So, we got to factor that in. But, Voldy, Lamar Jackson, I feel like teams are going to start to figure out ways to stop him. And I think after an MB- MVP season like that, you know, it's not like defensive coordinators are just going to let him, you know, keep, you know, burning in them, things like that. But the Titans right. shut them down in the playoffs. They did. I mean, people are going to take note, you know. But Lamar Jackson, I-, I think you can't go wrong with two or one if you're drafting right now. So, you know, Lamar is at two because, number one, Patrick Mahomes. I feel like he's going to have a very healthy season. You know, he's hopefully not going to get hurt. Um, But, I mean, the guy's going to keep going, man. I mean, he is going to be a beast, absolute beast. And I think we got to remember, you know, this is – This is Mahomes' magic, baby. I mean, Travis Kelsey's back. Um, Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill. I mean, Andy Reid as your coach. If you want to win your fantasy football league, you got to look at Mahomes. Kerf Doctor had Mahomes, okay? We got to think about that, too. But I want to get to our zoners. Uh, Guess who's tuning in right now? Caitlin Toner. Has she got her shirt yet, by the way? Do we know? Kerf Doctor, Voldy? Can neither confirm nor deny the previous <laughs> statement about the previous statement. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then uh, Andrew, going, talking about DK, is going to be a huge fantasy sleeper. Yeah, he is. Huge. Scary Terry. I had him last year. You did? Played pretty darn well for me. You did. And he says, Scary Terry will be another young receiver to nab. I also think Will Fuller has a big year. Forgot about that. Still, <laughs> still haven't gotten my award. Okay, well, we'll figure out something. We'll figure out <laughs> something. Okay, we'll get to that at a different time. But these are my infinity rankings. Voldy, what do you think? You know, I mean, honestly, the top three, you can't go wrong with either of them. I think if you look at the numbers, Patrick Mahomes, number one, Lamar, two, Russell Wilson at three, pretty solid yeah. but i mean if you if you look at it from the perspective as well i mean fantasy football purely numbers game is he producing is he's not get him out of here i would go with it but if we're looking at it i would go lamar number one in my mind okay did more with less sure like c money brought up a little bit ago <laughs> just the fact that i mean a lot of the guys that he had around him not a whole lot of household names sure. on that squad Patrick Mahomes turning guys into household names. Travis Kelsey was pretty established coming into it. Obviously, you know, him and the likes of when Alex Smith was throwing him the ball and also, you know, Patrick Mahomes, him and getting that connection built up. I mean, honestly, you can do a coin flip for one and two. Either way, you're going to come up a winner. 
Russell yeah. Wilson at three is solid. Deshaun Watson, I think, is a little bit of a sleeper. Four and five there with Kyler and Deshaun. A little bit of some sleeper guys. The sixth spot, yeah, Dak Pros- Dak is the is the sexy pick right there. But, yeah. you know, you start looking at guys as well. You know, you throw in the Baker Mayfields. You throw in, you know, Kirk Cousins as well. That sixth spot is a revolving door. No matter yeah. what we're going to be talking about, you could throw in seven or eight different quarterbacks in that spot. I mean, things are going to happen. You could put in Jared Goff for all you <laughs> will in that in that sixth spot. Yeah. And, you know, there might be a little bit. Yeah. And even see money brought up as well. No Drew Brees. Who's that guy? Well, we, we don't know who that is. But, yeah, not even him. He is a guy that puts up some points. He does. Apparently not good enough for the infinity rankings. No, because the reason why, as you can tell, running quarterback, running quarterback, running quarterback. I mean, you yeah. gotta do both, but not to A say bit of mobility helps. Yeah. Right, but if you're throwing touchdown pass after touchdown pass after, which again, Drew Brees does. We all know he's an ain't. We don't like talking about the ain'ts, but still, he's probably top ten. To be yeah. fair, Tom TFB, top 10 as well. But I think... Again, that revolving door at six. You could throw Drew Brees in there as well. Right. And let's see what Andrew's got here. Ravens have loaded up this offseason, and reports yeah. are they're trying to grab Yannick from the Jets. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, Lamar will have no excuse this season. Mahomes still number one. Lamb, Jack, and Russ could be swapped, and you wouldn't be wrong. And, they're, and the Ravens are also trying to see if they can work out Des Bryant, who hasn't played in two years. Yeah. He's going to be as fresh as can be. Right. So, hey. How deadly would that be? It's like, going to be really interesting. But yeah. the question I have is with Dak, he could easily fall out, out of that. He's, this, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's walking on thin ice because when Dak's bad, whew, He's really bad. But I believe he is a good quarterback. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I hear Yannick, or uh, I hear team actually interested in Yannick is the Jets. Well, of course. Well, the because Jets need him. Because <laughs> they literally have nobody else left. They just signed Chris Hogan this week, too. Yeah. Hey, former Pat. So, you know, there's a lot of options. But, again, these are my infinity rankings. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it because, again, if you can be able to both run and pass, you're going to get more points, right? Now, not to say that TFB, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers won't get you points because they will. I mean, they will. But, again, you got to factor in, you know, age, too. Got to th- think about that. So, anyway, uh, Volby, I think it's time for everyone's favorite segment. I think it's called Absurd or Approved. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, Absurd or Approved. All right, so you guys know the drill. Voldy has got the ARAs. So, Voldy, why don't you rattle off for us, please? All righty. Well, we start off A or A this week. ESPN decided to finally announce who's going to be manning the booth for a Monday night football going into the 2020 season. Three-man crew, not the usual suspects. Yeah. Steve Levy on play-by-play with analysts Louis Riddick and Brian Greasy taking over for the crew that was previously <laughs> uh, Joe Tessator, uh, the likes of Booger McFarland, and before he decided yeah. to leave and go back to the NFL, it was Jason Witten two years ago. But now the fact that we finally have a crew for Monday Night Football, absurd or approved, the three-man crew of Levy, Riddick, and Greasy for Monday Night Football. It's the safe bet. And that's the thing, is that ESPN has whiffed on so many people. McAfee, Manny, 
Um, I believe they were trying to pay a bunch of money to Tony Romo. So what do they come up with? Uh, Steve Levy, who, again, I, I like Steve. I think he's good. but I like I just, Steve Levy, too. I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's just kind of like it's, it's a safe bet for them. And Lewis Reddick, he knows his stuff. He does. I give him that. He knows. But it's not a name you can go and say, I got to roll. Watch that. You know, you know, Chris is saying right here, Lewis Reddick was a huge get. The man explains the game with ease. People like it. Right. Okay. I'm going to say it's got my stamp of approval. The reason why is because <laughs> are they going to bring back Booger? No. You can't. God, no. There will be an uprising, and the ratings will plummet. Absolutely plummet. But now, this is kind of the safe bet. They're going to see how it goes this year. If it goes well, well, hey, good. But, again, it's got the potential to go down. Now, Greasy, he's done it before. He's worked with college football. He's done a co- right. I think he's done some NFL games. He's played in the NFL, so he knows his yeah. stuff. Now, it's not like you're going to be seeing, hey, man, John Gruden, you know. But that's – you miss Gruden. I miss Gruden. Booger was terrible. I'm going to miss all the Booger memes we had last year. Hey, they're probably yep. – they'll keep it going. I, they might, you know. So we, we got to keep track of it. I mean, Mikey he knows what I was talking about with that. But, yeah, it's it, – it's got my stamp of approval just because, you know, it's a safe bet. So, Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, I have to agree with you on that same sentiment. It is the safe bet. Is it the right bet? Nah. I don't know. Yeah. I I love Steve Levy. Steve Levy is great. Commentator-wise, play-by-play, I'm not really sold on yeah. that. Louis Riddick? Louis Riddick is great. Always fun to talk to. Love to see what he'll do in the booth. Brian Greasy, that's a little bit of a reach in my mind. Yeah. I honestly, out of the the guys that were there last year, Joe Tessitore, I thought was great. I like Joe Tessitore. Yeah. You know, he's just got that right, that right pizzazz that goes along with it. He's got that right voice. He's into it. You know, we'll see what Steve Levy brings at the table. Lewis Riddick, like, you know, see more said, see money explains it with ease ryan grace is going to provide a little bit of a unique perspective as well kind of in between there with the old generation you know the marinos and the and the the the, you know brett Favre before things started to go really south of the border there to you know the guys of today the lamar jackson's the 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 patrick mahomes is kind of in there as well i think uh overall it's got my stamp of approval and the funny thing is they're not even doing the first game of the year they're on the b game they're on yeah. the nightcap, you know, for for Monday Night Football. They have uh, Kirk Herbstreet and uh, the other guy, Chris Fowler, yep. do the first game of the season. So I found that funny as well. Yeah, and again, they, they ran out of options. So, you know, that's their fault. ESPN, you know, it, McAfee is there. He's waiting. Nate Burleson, for goodness sake. I mean, the guy would be... They're going to have to pull Burleson away from that big-time NFL Network money. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's killing it with NFL Network. It's his birthday today, by the way. So, shout out our guy, our guy, Nate Burleson. And Tessa Tor was making five-yard catches sound like 30-yard gains, LOL. I don't know. What do you think about that, Voldy? Well, at least it wasn't Sean McDonough. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, gosh. I haven't been able to find the perfect combination since Tariko and Gruden left. True. I'll say that. I'll True. say that. Preach. All right. Next one, Voldy. Well, it was announced on Monday that the Canadian Football League decided to close up shop for the 2020 season, saying that the league had uh, uh, would have suffered a, quote, significant financial losses end quote if the league played through the coronavirus pandemic Mm -hmm. saying that it'll come back in 2021 maybe raising suspicions that maybe even you know the cfl wouldn't come back at all 
obviously the primary source of CFL's uh, source of revenue, that being, you know, ticket sales, saying that they would have taken big time losses, especially with a majority of their players coming from the U.S. and the travel bans and everything. They even got rejected by the Canadian government for uh, a $30 million loan to keep things going. Approved or absurd, CFL closing up shop for the season. Well, it looks like they had no choice. <laughs> Financial losses, a bunch. And, you know, it's it's tough because there's a lot of guys that, you know, don't make the NFL and they move on to other leagues. So, like, do they, you know, what do they do? You know, that's a big thing. But XFL, The Rock, okay, lay it the smack it down. That's an option. But with the CFL, going back to that, um, closing up shop, it's got my stamp of approval. I mean, what are you going to do with, with, you know, with everything going on? And I think Canada is trying to make sure they don't have an outbreak as well. Sure. But it's the thing is, is the Canadian government rejected the CFL's uh, request for a $30 million loan to help fund it. I mean, what are you going to do? Ask for another? They're just going to deny it again. So, again, it's too bad, but it seems like they're pledging to return in 2021. So, fingers crossed that that helps because there are some successful players from the CFL that played oh, yeah. pretty, pretty well in the NFL. So, Foldy, what do you think? You know, I the whole situation, Canada is not screwing around at all. No. They won't even let the Blue no. Jays play in Canada. Yeah. That's how serious that Justin Trudeau and crew are in Canada. The fact that they literally shut down an entire league uh, is amazing within itself. But yes, financial losses, a majority of the yeah. players come from the U.S. playing in Canada, obviously. It's, a, it's an approved uh, stamp of approval for myself. Good. Just really wish that be able to watch, you know, the Ottawa Red Blacks take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at, you know, nine o'clock on a Wednesday evening in July, you know, because that was yeah. always fun to watch CFL football just completely randomly. It's on on a Friday night on ESPN <laughs> and I'm just scrolling through channels and oh, next thing you know, it's the playoffs in like October. It's like, that's awesome. Just wish it would have happened. Right. And Johnny football, he played. Oh, well, excuse me, yep. Johnny or John Manziel. I'm sorry. John we, Manziel, yeah, yes. We can't, we can't call him that anymore. <laughs> Nobody but calls him John. No. Again, who cares? We're going to because we want to. But anyway, you know, Andrew was saying right here too. I mean, like I said, you know, they used the CFL to get into the NFL. So it's a bummer. But, again, they had no choice, which is tough nowadays. So... Anyway, next one, Voldy. Well, we talked about last week how about the, the Big Ten, the uh, <laughs> glorified mid-major conference that it is now, uh, decided to cancel the fall yeah. sports season. Well, yeah. one player wasn't having it. And, of course, it comes from one of those teams that puts the Big Ten on its back, yeah. that being Ohio State. Quarterback Justin Fields started a petition requesting the Big Ten to immediately reinstate the 2020 football season and as of Monday, Monday afternoon reached over 250,000 signatures. And that was started on a Sunday, saying that this cause is close to my heart. That's what he tweeted, citing the fact that uh, the Big Ten should allow football teams, universities to make the decision, play the conference schedule, and let it happen overall. Absurd or approved, Justin Fields' tenacity to get the Big Ten back up. Stamp of a freaking approval because I signed it, by the way. Um, nice. Because it's, I feel like this is an NCAA blunder. And I absolutely want the Big Ten. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we all do. We all do. But here's the thing NCAA doesn't want to deal with however they're going to, you know, test and things like that. It's just 
doesn't make sense. Now, Kevin Warren, good guy. I like him. Yep. He said today, too, he said, we're not changing our mind because people are saying, hey, look, we can't do this, which is a real bummer. Absolute 1,000% bummer because I feel like if they had a season, if they would at least, at least have some protocols in place, but the NCAA doesn't want to do it. And the Big Ten, you know, I don't know. I think it's a, I disagree. Kevin Warren, we'd love you here, but hey, man, let, let the guys reconsider, please. So then put in some protocols, work out with all, the, all these teams, and get it together because that's what people want. That's what people need. But if you don't, if we get to spring, Voldy, and we don't, and they don't have a plan, they push it back, they cancel it. Really? All right, Tommy, the year the Gophers are a top 10 team. Exactly. That's what I'm saying here, too. Uh, are going... Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of comments, so I'm catching up. Trust me. And going to compete for a Big Ten title, maybe a natty. There's a pandemic and the canceled season. <laughs> Hashtag Minnesota sports. Etch that ah! Minnesota sports fans gravestone right there. Yeah, my gravestone. And then on my gravestone, the Aints cheated, 2009. Uh the amount of scrutiny the Pac-12 and Big Ten will take if the ACC, SEC, Big 12 get a full season and despite some setbacks will look bad on those commissioners. Yeah, well, there was. That's how I look at it. Uh, but his son is going to be able to play in 2020, yet he thinks it's unsafe for Big Ten players. I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's got... A good professor at SMSU, his name is Brent Jeffers. He <laughs> tells you how it is with the NCAA, and I agree the with man him. man doesn't lie. He doesn't lie, and I'm telling you that right now. Griff Doctor knows it. I know it. Voldy knows it. Every SMSU person knows it. So, Voldy, what are your thoughts? You know, this is, is completely completely approved in my mind the fact that Justin Fields yeah. put himself out He's there because initiative. the Big Ten as of late and in my mind for a very long time has been the fifth conference of the Power Five <laughs> and the fact that they faltered so quickly is the exemplification of why the Big Ten will never be the SEC or the ACC. They're staring up at the Pac-12. They're also staring up at the Big 12 as well. They're that fifth conference if you're not Michigan, you're not Michigan State, you're not Ohio State, you're not Wisconsin nope. as of late to quite possibly sneak into the big, you know, the, the college football playoff. I mean, it's just literally never going to be <laughs> enough clout behind the fact that the Big 12 or the, the Big 10, I should say, even though they have 12 teams, they're still called the Big 10. It, it, yeah. it's, it's a whole other story altogether. This is in the right mind that Justin Fields, he just wants to play. Yeah. Every single Big Ten player just wants to play. Guys that are coming into their freshman year want to play. Guys coming into their fifth, sixth, and seventh year, if they're on that Antoine Winfield Jr. you know, college uh, preparation with that, going in their 19th year of college eligibility, it's ridiculous. Look, Mark Emmert, the president of the NCAA, he is just digging himself a very, very deep hole that he's pretty much going to be shaking hands with yeah. the, the people of China here pretty soon <laughs> to get to the other side because his grave is going to be seeing sunshine before too long from the other side of the world. Overall, the NCAA, the Big Ten, not doing themselves any favors whatsoever. Completely stamp of approval for Justin Fields. And Tommy said it, hit the nail right on the head. Should be an all or none for the NCAA. I said that last week too so Tommy yeah. we're on the same page now Mark Emmert should be stepping in one way or the other in my opinion not fair to some of the players to play and not to the others perfect and that's the thing is that the college players are taking a stand and what are you guys doing you're sitting there 
twiddling your thumb saying, no, we don't want it. We're going to push it to the spring. Good luck with that. Exactly, Voldy. I mean, that's what they're doing right now. They don't care. And I'm sick of it, as Coach Hines would like to say. So, Voldy, again, we talked about it last week, but NCAA, ugh, get out of there. All right, next one, Voldy. Well, this one uh, got a little bit more extra attention than I think it might have needed here this week. Well, this past week, I should say a couple days ago, a young, hot prospect that's making a name for himself, that being Fernando Tatis yes. Jr., hit his first uh, Grand Slam that give the 21-year-old uh, the Major League lead in home runs uh, in a lead of a late game. 10-4 to 4 was the score at the time against the Texas Rangers in Texas. Hits a Grand Slam. Three and O to give the Padres a fourteen to four lead at the time, and the Rangers a win on that night as well. Now this got a little bit dicey in the later half and after the game, the next couple of days as well. Uh, manager for the Padres, Jace Tingler, saying, "Hey, yeah. he missed a sign and he was supposed to take, but he swung on three and O, giving them a seven run lead, a seven run lead in the seventh inning, second home run of the game." career high seven rbis and well then the you know war of words start happening texas's manager took exception to it pitchers for the texas rangers started taking exception to it as well citing the whole unwritten rules you're up you know you're up seven runs in the late innings it's three and oh you should take but no tatis decided to swing for the fence and well it went over the fence tatis even said after the game hey i missed that sign that's on me i'm just a young dumb kid so be it. Let's all move on. And then everything started happening as well. Approved or absurd the fact that this is being an issue with the, quote, unwritten rules of baseball? Well, here's the thing. Why are they crying about this? Why? They're in Major League Baseball. Now, I would under understand if it was, like, maybe, a, like, completely overmatched game like within little league or something you know a team that you know you're gonna beat pretty bad 10 run that is what they usually had and again if you're just you know if you keep doing this you know people will get mad but in the mlb who gives a rip <laughs> honestly i think it's absurd because i mean so what he missed the call he hit a grand slam. Oh, big whoop. <laughs> then you guys got to play better, right? You got to pitch better. But it's like, well, it was three and all. It's like, well, then don't lollipop it to him and just have him smack it right out of the park. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, what is, what is going on? This unwritten rules BS is beyond me. I mean, it's just like, guys... You are in Major League Baseball, okay? Now, if you guys can't stop them, then, yeah, exactly, Jimbo, 100%. Maybe they should pitch better. <laughs> Who would have thunk? You're in Seriously. Major League Baseball. Figure out a way to stop them. Don't just say, well, we didn't like it because you hit a grand slam. Well, <laughs> what is he supposed to do? He liked the pitch. He hit it. Grand Slami. Ho hum. So yeah, I think it's absurd. The Rangers should, uh, you know, get a re reality deal check with it. and just deal with it. So Voldy, what do you think? I don't have a problem with it. Me the kid missed a sign. So be it. Yeah. Move on. The kid can flat out rake the predator himself. That being Fernando Tatis yeah. Jr. He can hit. He can run. He can, you know, play defense. He's a shortstop. He is just hitting the crap out of the ball. He's yeah. got 11 homers already this year, you know, chasing the lead with Mike Trout, him and him and Trout going back and forth. It's a kid's game. You know, it, baseball is as simple of a game yeah. as it gets. And the fact that, uh, you know, all the, the old guys are getting all bent out of shape and, you know, the, he missed a sign. Happens to everybody. The yeah. rule, written rules of baseball, there's a thousand of them. That's why they're unwritten. Yes, he missed a sign. He swung 3-0. and He probably should have known better. Got locked up in the moment. Probably thought he saw a meatball coming right at him and decided to whop it over the fence. 
so be it. Just move on. Get bent out of shape. You got 50 more games this season. You got like, you know, what, 35 more games this season? Get over it. You'll be fine. Yeah. And, again, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll complain and say, well, we should have a 10-run rule. It's just, it's soft. Guys, (laughs) stop being soft. It's just ridiculous. So, you know, here's what I'm going to say to the Rangers. Man up. Okay? Just man up. Don't be stupid. Don't cry about it. Just try and beat them. Okay? Figure out a way to beat them. Don't just sit and pout. If you do that, they're just going to keep beating up on you. So, hey, too bad. Sorry. Too bad. All right. uh, Last one, Voldy. Well, this one, uh, a little interesting note as well, talking about the NBA and the Players Association came to agreement uh, yeah. last evening for the eight teams that didn't make the bubble round for the uh, NBA and the league restart to uh, have volunteer group workouts at their facilities beginning in mid-September. Of course, this does come in the same line as well for the restart for next season as well for players and for those eight teams that didn't quite make the cut to be able to get back up and running, of course, playing out for the next season as well. This does include the likes of the Atlanta Hawks, Charlotte Hornets, Chicago Bulls, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Detroit Pistons, Golden State Warriors, even the Minnesota Timberwolves and the New York Knicks as well. All have that point of contention being, say, return to play, get ready for the start of next season as well. Absurd to approve for those eight teams getting ready to go. Stamp of approval. Um, you know, one person, or you know what, two people, I would think, two people. would be very happy with this. Will Rattel, Cole Monson. I think with the Wolves being able to work out things like that, I think it's going to be good because, honestly, with those teams, I mean, what else are they going to do? Wait till next season? No, let's get them rolling a little bit. So, again, exactly. this is proving that Adam Silver knows what he's doing. And, Absolutely. And I think people need to take note. And so, here are the teams that were left out. Atlanta, Charlotte, Bulls, uh, Cleveland, Detroit Pistons, Warriors, obviously, Wolves, and then the Knicks. You know why the NBA bubble was so fun to watch? Because all the terrible teams weren't in it. (laughs) Very good. Well, that's how you usually see more. Yes, fantastic. Uh, But, yeah, it's true. But I would like to see, you know, D'Lo win. Cat and whatnot, but again, uh, the the whole thing is nice because now that the bubble is working for the NBA, now they can have those eight teams and kind of a different setting too, but kind of within a bubble testing things like that. We'll see where it goes, but it's not going to be something where it's like, oh, free for all, do what you want, blah blah blah. No. Testing, social distancing, masks, everything. So, yeah, it's got my stamp of approval. And as the Curve Doctor likes to say, and everybody knows it. Okay. Foldy, what do you think? All right, cool. Let's just let it happen. Let the crappy teams try and get better. (laughs) See what happens. Just because the fact that, you know, it's been since March. So now three plus months since... uh, these teams had competitive practices and or games for that matter yeah. i mean yeah you got to do it got to let the the teams try and get better or at least try to show something off before the the draft gets going because lord knows when that's going to happen and let alone when next season's going to be for the nba so i mean yeah it's got my stamp of approval and again i haven't heard anything from orlando regarding covid so yeah again you know nba doing a fantastic job it's a campus like environment too so hey don't figure it out ryan saunders he knows what he's doing so again the nba doing a fantastic job uh while well as M- mlb eh, they've gotten better but again ncaa ugh, we already talked about it 
So anyway, uh, great job, Voldy, as always. Sure. And um, Voldy, we have a lot of shield shout outs. So we do. We got a lot of them. Uh, for the, the zoners that know, there's going to be a couple people that have, are tuning in that are getting one. So let's do it. Shield shoutouts. Jimbo loves the flag. I do too. Kerf Doctor does as well. I'm sure you do, Voldy. But Voldy, we got another little surprise. So yeah, why don't you? We do. I mean, Jimbo, if you like the flag uh, that's back here, then you guys are gonna love this one. Hey. We Full shield shout out flag. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. You gotta love it. Courtesy of the fellas at Flag Nation. Follow them on the Instagram. Just happened to stroll uh, across an ad of theirs one day on Instagram. Said, hey, let's get some Minnesota Sports Live flags. Got a shield shout outs flag going as well. You know, it's not too often you can put your face on a, nope. on a flag. So be it. Just so happens it was the right time. So maybe this will go up next week. We'll just have to wait and see here with Shield Shoutouts. But be sure to follow uh, Flag Nation on the socials medias and create your own flag and get flags of uh, ones that they've already got printed up as well. Really, really cool uh, opportunity to help build out the Minnesota Sports Live brand a little bit more. And, nice. you know, put a little more branding out there in the world for us, too. You got to love it. I mean, the Zoners so cool. are loving it. Jimbo. He's loving it, but again, you know, these flags represent the zoners, us. So, again, zoners, check out Flag Nation. Did a fantastic job. So, Volby, fantastic. stamp of approval. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. All right, going with it as well. Be sure to buy your Minnesota Sports Live t-shirts as well. Jimbo's the man to get a hold of. You can get a hold of myself, The Shield, DJ Manny C, The Curve Doctor as well. Shirts galore. We've got them. You need to buy them. We've got the supply. Double and true. You are the demand. They are. Be sure to get your shirts. Double true. Excuse me. Gotta have them. Yep. Gotta have <laughs> Uh, we got to go uh, another Shield shout-out to Byron, Minnesota native. Brenna Connolly was named the 67th Princess K of the Milky Way. I have no idea who Brenna is, but she hails from my hometown, putting Byron, Minnesota on the map, so congratulations to her. Of course, the Princess K pageant, uh, you know, usually going on during the state fair, but uh, unfortunately, uh, not this year. You know, a little thing called COVID going on. So yeah. just ruining everybody's fun overall. So uh, congratulations to Brenna. I'm sure very, very well-deserved. And, you know, fellow Byron Bear as well. Hey, perfect. Got to love it. Next one. Well, I just want to send uh, my congratulations. I didn't get a chance to talk to either of them. My cousin Tara and her new husband, Zach, uh, got married over the weekend. I was lucky enough to be in attendance. Me and uh, the missus, we went up, hung out with my mom, a couple of cousins, some family. Spent some good quality family time up in Fargo. So congratulations to the Wences, Tara and Zach, on their nuptials. And uh, many well wishes to them on the future as well. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Believe me, I wanted to ask. Didn't have the opportunity. Oh, a little okay. too busy. So believe me, I wanted to. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. Maybe somebody else. Does. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll figure it out. Got, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We Next know one. the right people. Yeah, uh, exactly. Big shield shout out to the Red Pepper in Fargo. Delicious as always with my favorite sandwich up there. Turkey grinder. You got to go light on the lettuce, extra red sauce, chips, and now queso they have there Ooh. at the Red Pepper in Fargo. Well worth the trip and the drive up there as well capped off a nice weekend uh sunday afternoon with some grinders and oh it's well worth the trip so a big shield shout out once again to the red pepper uh you didn't see will or tell did you no i did not oh okay. no, i did not but you know we'll have to coordinate that a little bit better for the future <laughs> he's a busy man i'm a busy man we got to get our people to connect somehow it's a whole thing yeah it's a whole thing <laughs> well we'll figure it we'll figure it exactly. out exactly so Next one. Got to uh, send out a shield shout-out to a good friend of ours, a friend of the family. In fact, part of the family. 
Jack Keesling Books on the socials medias. Be sure to go check him out on the Facebook and the Instagrams as well. He's got a weekly show like what, like we do, talking about anything and everything. He's also an accomplished author. Uh, he's got a couple of books out right now. You can go check out Fists of Arkin and also his latest release as well, A Thin Red Line. Be sure to check him out on the Facebook and the Instagrams as well. He's got a weekly show. Really cool dude. Got to spend a lot of time with him. He's actually married to one of my other cousins. Uh, he, he loves his 49ers. Loves Colorado Rockies, Avalanche. Talk about sports, talk about life, talk about music, anything and everything. Check it out. Jack Keesling Books. We'll be sure to uh, uh, mention him here frequently as well. But also check out some of his books that he's got uh, up for sale. Really, really good stuff that he's got going on. Yeah, he's been really active on the Zone oh, yeah. socials media. So we appreciate He's our guy. Yeah, we appreciate it. So Absolutely couple of birthday shout outs that we got to mention here. Uh, happy belated 40th birthday to the man. That being Senior Shockey, Jeremy Shockey. You know the story why he's Senior Shockey, then you know. Yeah. If you don't know, that's another story for another time that includes uh, some unsavory characters as well. Uh, also got to send out a happy belated birthday as well. Somebody who has been just lighting up the comment section tonight. Yeah. Our guy, Chris Moore. C Money was my guy, senior year, Southwest, made it always completely worth it. Talked about doing a podcast for the longest time, behind the dish, <laughs> you need to get that up and running. So much fun we had those last that last year at Southwest, so happy belated birthday to our guy, C Money. Hey, if you're a former grad of SMSU, you are a friend of Minnesota. It's true. Absolutely. It's damn true so we love it appreciate you chris so um boldy i think last one right last one yep just gotta wish a happy 32nd birthday to kirk cousins oh, Kirky. that's that's what i got for him. Well, that, that's all i gotta say there's <laughs> also another birthday um you know voldy the flag in the background there uh the logo um yeah. you know who made that the curve Doctor, sister, Kelsey. Yes. It's her birthday. How old is she? Curve doctor. Uh, she's 24. <laughs> 24. <laughs> so, happy birthday to Kelsey, especially for making the identity of Minnesota Sports Live. Absolutely. A big happy birthday and a shield shout out, out to Kelsey, too. Exactly. So, again, there's a lot of people have birthdays on the 19th. I don't know. <laughs> was yeah it's crazy must be a thing nate burleson i mentioned earlier his birthday nate burleson so. too yeah friend <laughs> of the show friend of the show exactly so uh shield shout outs is wrapped up voldy great job as always check out the shield shout outs oh yeah look at look at the flag fantastic yeah. we'll have to <laughs> see you know if we can you know Put that up too, you know. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll maybe switch out things like that. We'll make we got it covered. We'll make it happen. Make it out. And you know, as always, good job to the Kerf Doctor as well. And I'm glad that the Drone Gate 2020 is over. You're free, and everything along those lines. And again, get your shirts. Double trouble. <sighs> we'll figure out something with an award. We'll get you make your award. We'll make it happen, okay? Kerf Doctor and I will work on it. We'll get it to you because double trouble. You got to get your shirts, right? Okay, we're going to figure it out. So we'll go from there. But also, check out W2 Performance. Will Rattel, yes, he didn't show up at C. Voldy at the Red Pepper, but he's got a lot of content he's been giving out. So Will has, has done. He's been yeah. hard at it. Yeah, I've been trying to share something but we will it's going to happen so and again we might have him on the show and via zoom have you guys uh, check out uh you know maybe give that matt ryan story again so hey <laughs> we got options right so lots of options but again you know we'll see what happens will we tell maybe someone else we got some guys so we'll figure it out but great job voldy great job curve doctor and thank you, thank you. To all the Doctor. zoners that uh, chimed in tonight. I mean, we appreciate it. And if you haven't gotten your shirt, get, get it now, right now. 
Just do it. Jimbo's got you covered. We got you covered. Just do it. We got it. So, without further ado, folks, keep in the zone. Holla. Thank you for watching Minnesota Sports Live. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for live show broadcast. And as Voldy likes to say, follow us on all the socials medias.